Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Monocraft bench and I'm going to build um, this Armour Hobby 148 Hurricane 2C. Quite a few of you in the comments on the review mentioned you'd like to see it built and probably more importantly I would as well so I am indeed going to crack on and do that in this video. I will be doing this aircraft but with the camo as we discussed in the review and uh, because I am I don't know I've got a couple of little aftermarket extras but I think with good reason so first and foremost I've got some new exhaust I didn't think the kit supplied exhaust were really very much to shout about to be honest they're not awful I've certainly seen much much worse but they also aren't great so I had a dig around in my stash of Spitfire parts yeah bear with it <laughs> and I found these these are where did the header go I just had it here it is Ultracast I don't think I'm actually relatively sure you can't even buy these anymore and I have had these for multiple years so I've got a, a, a big box of bits that are relative uh, that are relate to Spitfires so drag these out <coughs> just old school cast resin exhaust um, they're decent uh, they're slightly hollowed out at the back uh, they're just very nice and as you can see I've taken this one off the block and just checked that it fits in the aperture on the side of the cowl of this kit and it does so no doubt some people are going to find it a little bit odd that I would do that but I mean they basically look the same they basically have the same engine so I'm sure it'll be fine the other thing I picked up was a set of master brass cannon barrels and these things are a slippery slope I'm telling you the the barrels and the pitos I don't know which is worse I think they're as bad as each other but once you start using these things it's really hard to go back to not using them and again the kits supplied barrels are not the best again I've certainly seen worse but they're really not great and the funny thing with this is has anybody noticed seeing any glaring similarities here <laughs> the the worst thing about using master barrels usually is, is the having to drill massive holes in the leading edge of wings and it can be quite awkward to do the, these are already the holes in the wings of this kit are already the right size for these and funnily enough I was on the armor, armor site the other day and I noticed that the next boxing or was it just in the in the general bit anyway they offer this set in conjunction with this kit so I think maybe that is not a coincidence anyway I shall crack on and start building this thing and I will report back regularly with pertinent facts So our initial steps of this build focus on the wings and the undercarriage bay. This is a little unusual, but not unwelcome. And straight away you bump into something which seems to me to be quite commonplace on armour kits, and that's the location of the sprues on the wings. Um, they put them, obviously they go around the outside of the part, but they always intrude quite badly on to the moulded area of the part. Uh, so this isn't in itself really an issue but it does mean that you have to be very very careful with the way that you clean up the parts so just here for instance you can see that the sprue gate comes all the way into there so you need to snip it off away from the part and then just gradually trim it back with the scaffold or sand it with a stick if that's the way you prefer to do things and then you move on to the creation of this little wheel bay uh, which is the first four steps here which is quite delightful it's it's relatively simple in its makeup but it, it creates a lovely detailed effect and it locates then into the upper wing none of these plastic hinges need to be trimmed they're all perfectly fine so you've got some little nodules on these top corners of this wheel bay and they locate into these little divots and it really does 
lock into there very solidly it won't stay there but it's solid enough that you know it's in the right place You've got no worries about misalignment of this wheel bay at all but what I am going to do is paint this um, along with the sort of close out areas here with some silver before I glue it in just so that I've got proper access to get paint in into the top here all right just a quick note for a quick easy simple and very effective upgrade you can do I have painted these parts with my aluminium colour um, I note that I've painted the top of the wheel bay as well as the bottom and all of these areas around here and that is because when fitted I do believe this will be somewhat visible as part of the lower area when, of, of the cockpit so I have painted the whole thing um, the colour it is aluminium as you can see but it's a mixture that I made this stuff um, because if <sighs> model model paints model aluminium coloured model paints uh, mostly the intent of them seems to be to try to ape a natural metal finish we're not trying to do that in this case these were painted with silver paint a silver lacquer um, and aluminium lacquer so I don't want it to look like natural metal I want it to look like silver paint um, so for that reason I don't just default to using a straight aluminium paint although I do think that the Tamiya LP 11 lacquer paint is quite nice for this sort of thing in the larger scales especially uh, so what I've done is mixed the paint up using this this is AK's extreme metal aluminium it's really lovely paint you can see how thin that is from it moving around in the jar there um, it goes on beautifully it's quite robust it's easy to clean out of your airbrush it's just lovely lovely stuff it does have a shelf life on it so don't buy any more than you need because um, it doesn't last forever and ever um, but that's the base of this colour and all I've done is added some light grey into it it doesn't really matter what light grey you add but you can see the difference in the bottom there how much more grey it looks and although it doesn't look particularly metallic there you can see here this is what you get very definitely a silver or aluminium coloured finish but it's not super in your face and looking like it's trying to be actually metallic because that's not what we want um, the other thing so the quick and simple upgrade I got diversified there I got distracted there by my silver didn't I so the seat this is the kit seat made up of a bucket part two sides and, and the handle here and if you look at it you can see I've got a thick side and a thin side so I'm going to get the tweezers to hold it. This side, when the camera focuses again, if, there you go. This side is how it comes, and this side is how I've modified it. And all I've done is used my pointed scalpel blade to trim, and it basically introduce a bevel to that front edge. And again, you see how the light is catching the beveled area to give the illusion from many, many angles of a thin edge instead of this big, thick, fat and very unprototypical edge. Nothing really wrong with the seat, but just that quick couple of minutes spent shaving that down. I just shave it down like this, just really carefully get the very tip of the blade. I just run it down a bit at a time. If you try to take too much off in one go, you'll end up with a lumpy finish because it'll just the blade will catch and you'll get too much in one place, not enough in another. And so just gently shaving it down bit by bit at quite a shallow angle until you get a nice thin edge along there. And then just use a little piece of wet and dry just to just give it a, smooth it down a touch and finally finish off with a touch of extra thin just to take the marks out of it and you end up with a much better looking seat. Now looking at step seven and modifying the I guess the shell ejector sheet hole uh, so it says here 
painting options one and three make a new hole in the new position coloured in red here on the diagram and fill in the original hole which is marked blue so what they're talking about is as it comes this hole is over here and what happens is as soon as you fit the fuel tank it covers that up so obviously whatever's supposed to come out of the hole can't. I think it's probably the link ejector hole, isn't it? So the hole is either extended, well, moved, relocated, which I've done over here, note. It's now a long hole. But the thing is, if you're going to fit the tanks, you don't actually need to fill what's left of the original hole because the tank itself covers it, which it doesn't mention there. I'll pull that on back to front or spanner. Okay, put it on the right way around. It still covers it up though. So there's no need, if you're going to fit the tanks, and I actually am, there's no need to fill the excess hole. If you're going to do options one or three and not fit the tanks, however, you'll need to make the alterations. And I would suggest in that case that you elongate the hole as I have here and then just make a piece of plastic card to fill in the original one. Now, although we're not at the stage of adding the cannons yet, whenever uh, you buy a master set or any aftermarket set for these armaments, it's as well to check them at an early enough stage to make it easy to do whatever modifications need doing. Now I had a feeling when I looked at these in the packet that Whichever way around it is, I'm not going to say that. Master have made these cannons to fit the kit, or that Armour have made the kit to fit the cannons, but whichever way around it's happened, it has happened. As you can see from looking at the kit part, the cannon stub part of it looks very, very similar. Okay, let's just say identical. I'll just bring them up my hand closer. And as I said already, the kit parts are not horrendous but they're also not great so when I saw them I thought oh I hope there's some master cannons available for this kit and there are uh, and indeed they do literally just drop straight in into position as per the kit parts as you can see here I know everything's askew and it's not fitted but they aren't glued and you can see the level of improvement you get there over the kit part as well so as well as the drilled out tip the spring detail is much better you've got the rivet detail around the stub and the best part of all is that they're, they just drop fit plus the barrels themselves are separate so you can build the model with the stubs in place and just fit the barrels later no risk of any damage to anything and because they do drop fit in exactly the way that the kit parts do it means you can assemble the wing deal with those very slight corner gaps in the aperture there should you desire to I know not everybody's bothered and then fit the stubs no bother or obviously fit the stubs and sort out the gaps around them because being metal you're not going to damage it with your little bit of sanding to get rid of that you see you get that just that tiny little notch gap in there I don't want that so I'll deal with it really really great addition they're not the cheapest it's not the cheapest kit in the first place as we know um, and I, I think these barrels are another ten pounds so not the cheapest addition but a very very worthy one I think so I've got the wings together here um, not forgetting to detail paint that cooling pipe work in the, in the brass colour in there obviously I'll be doing a wash and what have you in here at some point but uh, I used the black the AK Black Widow super glue with a touch of talc in it just to fill these tiny little pro little um, sort of notches in the leading edge where all the apertures go so I thought I'd just show that and hopefully because I've used the black you can actually see how you get these little sort of triangles at the, at the edge of each aperture and all of them had that and I've just gone through it's a really really tiny amount of filler and um, I'm, I'm really quite sure that a lot of people just wouldn't bother with this but 
that's not going to focus for me is it but there it is bleeding edge was finished off with uh, I've, I've actually I don't normally use CA to glue wings together um, because as, as as strong as super glue, super glue can be it's very weak in shear strength and with wings being somewhat flexible it's quite easy to split the seams uh, so I don't normally use it on wings but this the hurricane does have quite a thick boxy leading edge um, so I thought I'd use super glue but I have only used it on the leading edge the trailing edges are glued with extra thin as usual um, and they've not been dealt with the seam that's left behind is not terrible actually anyway but it's not been dealt with yet um, what I do need to show you quickly is this trailing edge issue so do you remember from the inbox and the chatterbox too if you watched it that we've got this damage to the lead, to the trailing edge corners on the upper wing um, I've had feedback since a couple of people who have similarly damaged trailing edges in their kits and a couple of people who haven't so it's going to be potluck on whether or not you get a damaged one but this one's already been fixed this side obviously it's not been any further damage I've just stuck it down with super glue and I will just do the same with this one just to show you that that wasn't a fluke so sharpenish sharpened cocktail stick I've got some super glue on the tray here just out of shop it's just an old bit of blister packaging that I have it's taped down to the desk and I I just put super glue on to it and I'll introduce some into that gap and then literally just push it down I'm using my thumb now because I'm lucky enough to have one by all means use some form of clamps or tweezers if you aren't so lucky as to have a suitable thumbnail and I've, I don't know if you saw I just rolled that down to make sure the whole thing's pushed down and now I'm holding it it doesn't need a massive amount of pressure but I'm just holding it in place long enough for the super glue to take hold and keep it down there and once it's doing that I nip back in with the stick and wipe away a little bit of excess that's gone onto this area here because I suspect that that may negatively influence the wing joint to the fuselage later if I don't get rid of it now it's easier just to rub it off while it's still wet and try and remove it when it's fully hardened and there you go that is that super curly trailing edge all fixed up still looks scuffed because of that where it's stretched it's all white but that is back in place without any real real issues at all as I say this trailing edge joint will be sorted out once the uh, extra thin is completely cured and of course the other thing to remember whilst dealing with those tiny flaws in these apertures is just to make sure that your cannon barrels still fit just use them as a guide um, obviously I put black super glue in into the apertures and then I used a round file and just tickled it out and just I've, I used the cannon barrels as a a guide basically to make sure I'd got the holes back to size just like so and actually just in a final point before I forget these cannon barrels are not all the same diameter believe it or not they're very very slightly different in that the longer ones which are the outboard ones which takes account for the slight taper of the leading edge are slightly larger in diameter than the inboard ones so do make sure when you're doing your uh, test fits and everything else that, that, that you use the right the right cannon barrel for the job because if you file the inboard holes to suit the outboard barrels so then these inboard cannons will then become a, a tad sloppy and the other reason I've gone ahead and dealt with all of these seams and got all of this titivated properly before I've gone any further at all is because the next steps in the build process involve building up the really quite int intricate cockpit detail on top of this wing so you don't really want to do all of that and then decide you want to clean up your seams and, and run the risk of damaging any of this while flipping the whole thing around now of course you could wait 
until the whole thing's joined together. Um, but it's just, it's really easy while everything is separate, especially this um, join across the lower leading edge here. And you can still see it because I've used clear super glue alone to fill that. You can still quite see, clearly see where it is. But that is, as the shine is showing you, that is no longer a seam, it's gone. Uh, and I also took out the mould seam that ran just above it. Um, those seams in particular are massively easier to deal with while the wing is apart than they would be once fitted. It's perfectly possible of course, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just easier while the wing is not fitted to do that. And with all of those copious words said, I guess I'll get on with moving on to the next steps and starting on the cockpit now. Now as you can see here, steps 10 through 14 have you constructing the sort of cockpit internals. Uh, most of which you can see here, other than what's already fitted to the wing. So I've already done, so what we've fitted to the wing is uh, the meat of the control column, the floorboards and these parts here. I've glued those to the top of what is actually the undercarriage bay. So now you can see quite clearly that had I applied wash to the details on the top of this part here, you would now be completely invisible anyway. They really, that sort of little bell crank detail that was on there is, is not visible anymore. These parts obviously aren't painted yet. So all I've done is I've taken them from the sprues and very carefully prepped them, taken off the mold seam lines and sort of tidied up the corners, just neatened everything up and put them together. Uh, all of these parts, they locate nicely, but the locations are quite subtle. This is not a sort of click into place sort of a job, but it all does fit together beautifully anyway. The seat is done. I thinned out the other, the other half of that, and that has made a good improvement to how that looks. And on top of that, you've got the side frameworks. Uh, the rear bulkhead and armour plate there's another piece of framework and these are the other parts that go onto the control column so I will be painting those now the majority of this is simply painted in this airframe silver mix that I've got there are bits of colour pointed out and the instructions are quite good at showing you what and where needs to be picked out And here you rejoin proceedings with the basic colours on. As you can see, I have painted all the bits with the silver and then I've added interior green. Now my interior green is this stuff, Mr. Colour C364. However, this is not standard Mr. Colour C364. This is mixed up. There's all sorts of stuff in here. As you can see, uh, <laughs> this jar's been around a while and I basically keep topping it up actually the the original color that was in here was decent enough but like pretty much well all of the interior greens that I've seen so far it's much too dark and much too gray um, so to it is added white and actually RF sky um, but as I say over the years and this has been in use for some years now all sorts of things have ended up in here um, as an aside um, the Japanese interior green this is the C127 as it comes in the jar isn't a bad match either it doesn't look it there but once it's mixed up it's not a bad match either actually as I say the, the majority of um, the mixed RAF interior grey greens are they're just not the right colour. They're too dark and too grey and, and dull and just nasty. Uh, you bet you, what you need is a dark sky. So Tamiya's XF71 uh, cockpit green IJN is too dark and too grey, but the colour of the lid is more what you're aiming for. You really want uh, a very deep sky rather than a, a, a nasty grey green. Anyway, I digress. Um, these have all been done, as you can see, We've got some masking, so the top part of the interior here is in the green colour on both. The rest of it is in the silver grey. Uh, likewise, the armour plate is interior green, whereas the rest of it is silver. 
and then on this left hand side frame you've got an interior green panel which will then have some switches picked out on it the cockpit the instrument panel itself again silver mostly well mostly black actually and that just shows you how that needs to look um, I have to detail paint and add decals to this so in readiness for that I have of course given the whole all of these parts including all this and the wheel bays and there are a few interlopers here bits of radiator and things I just got a couple of bits that need to be silver quickly snipped them off painted them while I had it in the in the airbrush everything has been coated with a single but wet layer coat of the X22 with the Mr Colour Thinner in order to seal that base finish off ready for some washes and things you can because these are all sort of acrylic nominally you can just go straight in with wash if you're using an enamel thinner based wash which I do but just um, if you do that and the colours are fairly matte it'll kind of soak in a bit and leave it all looking a bit mucky which I don't want I want to be able to delineate the detail nicely where I want to around joints and things without making the whole thing look mucky that isn't my intent so with that being the case uh, you do really need to use that sort of gloss layer just to seal the paint off I have had a very unfortunate tweezer accident um, wherein I have tweezer pulled the top piece of this piece here of my control column somewhere over there so I'm now going to dismantle the entire bench in the hopes of finding my spade grip um, if I don't I think I may have some spare bits of Spitfire ones in my box I could probably uh, modify one of those for use but that's kind of annoying I'm going to try and find the real one first all right so while I am waiting on the clear coat to dry on all those internal parts I want it to be completely dry before I try doing any washes uh, if you try to use weathering products on that clear coat before it's fully dry it kind of will behave the same as if it wasn't a clear coat so I cut off all these pieces now actually what you can see here pretty much represents the whole rest of the kit <laughs> there are a few sort of small pieces left on there the undercarriage legs and um, aerials and a few odds and sods but this is most of the rest of the kit believe it or not and one of the things that I like to do and it speeds any build along really uh, anytime you're waiting for a particular sub assembly to do something you want go get the other bits and just sit and clean them up glue them together where applicable you know and just get ahead of the ahead of the game a little bit and whilst doing that um, I'm cleaning up these two halves for the tailplane and I've discovered some really strange moulding anomalies on this upper tailplane half which I thought I would show you. Um, I had already noted on review the presence of these flash just on this leading edge here um, and there's also a pretty uh, quite a raised ridge around this ejection pin mark on the inside here although I don't think that will impede the fit of the part particularly. Note there are plastic hinges present on both of these but that doesn't actually impede their fit together at all so don't worry about that but what we did find is some really strange moulding are they flaws lack of machining I don't know so on the end here there we go do you see that serrated sort of going on there that's not meant to be there Please stay in focus camera. There. That is uh, some sort of anomaly mismatch. I don't know. On this end, we have a similar thing going on, although it looks more like a bit of flame cut armour. And on the, along the uh, back edge of the part also, it is similarly rough. I'll just There we go see all those ridges and lumps I've sanded this side smooth but you can see sort of here in particular a big lump and a lot also on the inside of the part again there's these three lines are raised and we'll need sanding or trimming away so this for some reason upper tile plane section is is and there's another piece here 
sorry. Uh, this area here, there's a whole chunk there that needs to go. Now, I have seen a couple of these built, but I haven't seen any sort of comments or anything. So I don't know if this is just my example, although I really don't think it will be with things like this. They, they should be on everybody's, but so just look out for that. Uh, that this sort of aft area probably not so bad and honestly I, I don't know let's have a little I think the elevator might still fit onto here even let me just quickly snip these screw stubs off I like to leave a little bit on there when I take them off the sprues because they're quite chunky and it's easier to snip them off without damaging the part when you haven't got the rest of the sprue on there as well. well then. Okay, so that won't even fit in the recess with that big chunk there. So yeah, the, the elevator isn't going to fit without trimming those parts away, as you can see, hopefully. So yeah, weirdness, um, I do think that's going to be on everybody's kit so that's going to need trimming. The other thing is, this is um, one half, this is the right, right hand half of the fin and this is another piece which has been damaged in transit. You can see the very forward part of that is curled right over, just like those inboard wing roots were. It's quite harsh as well, it's actually imparted a bend in, into the piece it's, it's completely distorted compare it to the other one it it will um it'll go back into place with glue but again just mm, may end up having to use a bit of filler and sanding on that because it is it's it's actually flattened it so there might not quite be enough material left for that to come back but yeah it's 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 distorted the entire piece as well so a little bit unfortunate and another thing to check for if anybody's buying the kit from a hobby store and has the luxury of checking inside the box then these are the kind of things you can have a quick look at the parts and see if you've got distorted wing roots or fin pieces and then, and then try the next box and get one that hasn't got them so now i've fettled this tail plane into shape squared up all those corners got rid of all the ridges and chunks and I've also cleaned up the elevator piece itself and you've got these four pegs along the lower part of this elevator assembly that act as hinges, they appear as hinges when you fit the thing together and thus, so it looks like the hinge points um, what that does mean is it's difficult to pose the elevator droops down were you to want to you might want to consider either deepening these holes or actually just trimming that down a touch i might just leave it level because my control column is set level anyway anyway i did have to trim quite a bit to get this to fit here and in fact it is still quite tight it looks okay from the top though so what I'm talking about is this area here where where the tower plane cuts away to allow for the balance on the elevator. It does clear now, there isn't really a gap arguably, well certainly there is a gap on the real thing but it's not massive, I don't imagine you can get your hand through it on the majority of airframes but I do think actually I need a bit more of a gap here than I've got, something more like ugh, trying to bend my arm at a very unnatural angle there something a bit more like I've managed to achieve on this side and I've just done that quite simply by just gradually just trimming away I'll leave it now for now and I'll join these together I'll just use um, extra thin on these uh, and then do some final sort of shaving and trimming there just to get that to fit properly when this is as a whole so yeah that's overall slightly disappointing and a bit less a bit lower 
standards wise than the rest of it but it isn't the end of the world and it has only taken a few minutes to fix it well you rejoined me part way through cockpit painting festivities and there's a few things i wanted to point out and look at i have been doing some detail painting and adding wash now my the wash that i am using is here Blech. dirty nasty color this is made from search is desperately for the oil brusher this looks nice and organized here but it's just pure chaos all around the bit you can't see uh, oil brusher starship base sludge uh, starship base sludge and starship filth are just top-notch colors for general washes and, and what have you I have added though into this a touch of the Tamiya panel line black um, and it's just enamel thinners in there mix that to your preferred consistency this is slightly on the thicker side to save it from sort of have it, it does have a tendency to split apart a bit which irritates me but I've added the wash onto the parts now if I just um, perhaps grab this one you can see I've just popped it into the corners and around the detail let that dry off a bit and then you can buff off the excess with a cotton bud no problems at all detail painting is the next part I'll show you this one again that's just a wash and a little bit of detail painting and I'm basically just following the instructions I don't I actually don't have any decent references for the hurricane what I do have is this uh, these were produced by the RAF Museum and it's it's a sort of a reprint of the original APs for the aircraft so it's it's really interesting if you want to know about the fuel system hydraulic system the rigging it's really good but it's not actually super useful purely as a reference source honestly uh, for a build like this what it does have right at the front is some nice sort of views of the interior which these are those kind of strangely reworked black and white photos but they're quite they're quite big and quite detailed so these are these are fairly useful and obviously they have a key to tell you what everything is that's quite quite a handy book and i do have the the spitfire one as well but truthfully more for interest than anything else I, I just don't have anything else on hurricanes so i am literally just trusting the instructions here uh but i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i think they're pretty good so yeah that's that the, the instrument panel i've just started out by adding some white in the areas where the colors are going to go and that is going to be further enhanced using the kit's own decal sheet now you remember maybe there is a full panel decal there as you can see number 33 I'm not going to use it in that form. I'm going to cut it up into multiple small pieces, probably punch out some of these dials um, and cut around. I really don't know if that's coming if it's really visible on film, but all of the sort of the tiny little labels and things are all on here. So I'm going I'm going to sort of cut it out in pieces and use it like that, just around everything. Uh, this is going to be kind of fiddly, I think. Um, next up the fit the wing to fuselage fit by the time this video goes out uh, you would have seen various builds and you would have seen just how ridiculously good the wing to fuselage fit on this thing is uh, what you won't have seen is the view of it from the inside and, and it actually bears looking at I think because the precision evident here of the fit look at those locating like uh, lugs at the front and at the rear how they just sit into the recesses in the fuselage sides and look how closely all of this fits up against this fuselage half and it's just sitting there there's no glue on this clearly it's just sitting there it's it's just absolutely splendid really uh, you'll note that I've snipped off the plastic the um, plastic hinge back there that was just so that the masking tape would stay straight where I masked up for the interior green but there you go it's just absolutely remarkable the fit on this really beautiful um, same things happened in the wheel bay I've literally just added a bit of wash in there polished it off tiny bit of dry brushing with some silver that's it 
I may dirty that slightly more at a later date but I'm quite happy with the way that looks actually. I was of course unable to find my spade grip uh, that pinged off over here somewhere. I did look, I stripped the whole bench, I went underneath, couldn't find it. So there's going to be an ADF going in the book for a new use control column for a short while. Uh, since we don't have a spade grip, uh, I, did, uh, I have contacted Greg at Armour and he's going to help and sort me out with a fresh one soon. Uh, possibly won't get here before the, the model's finished but I'll just um, I'll post it in from the top when I get it uh, and the last thing is this here it's a nice diagram part number A32 look at this this great big thing here that great big thing is this tiny little nugget it's actually got a huge piece of sprue still attached to it <laughs> that is part A32. Absolute craziness. I'm really confused as to why that's why the, why even mould that separately, I don't know. Uh, but there are several of those. So I'm just in the process of cutting out these smaller parts. I'll get them cleaned up um, for addition to this interior which which is gonna really look something when it's done I think. And finally I managed to find some seat belts. We do have the decor of the seat belts here. Sometimes I think decal seat belts are acceptable. Truthfully, I'm not going to lie. I think sometimes they're okay. In this instance, no, they're not. But what I did manage to find in my copious box of bits and pieces is this, and this is uh, an old model design construction little harness set just in, in normal brass uh, British Sutton it doesn't need to be specific because a Sutton harness is a Sutton harness so I shall be bending that up and sticking that in there so here right now I'm part way through the process of decaling this instrument panel which you might recall I said that I would punch the decals out and do them one by one the rest of the interior is done it's ready ready to fit And if I do say so myself, I think it looks rather glorious. It's not overly heavily weathered. I didn't want that. It is grubby and dirty, but it's not ridiculous. Uh, so the panel itself, here we go, this is where I'm up to so far. And all I'm doing, as you can see by all the specs here, is I've got the supplied panel decal. And using my punch and die set, so this is the sort of punch part, or die part, you slot the decal in and try to find a hole that roughly matches the size of the decal. So just decide on which one you're going to do. Whatever you do, don't, pu don't punch them all out at once because you'll pretty quickly lose track of which one is which. But try to line one up with, a, with a, roughly the right sized hole. You never seem to be able to find an exact right sized hole um, but near enough is good enough in this case because the black outline on these is irrelevant it won't show up if it's slightly too big. So that one looks about right in there and once you're happy that you've got one lined up which I'm happy that that's lined up. Select the correct punch for that hole. Pop that in there. You could push this through with your fingers with a fairly firm press, this will go through no bother. But I tap it with my tiny hammer simply because they're less likely to get raggedy edges doing that and also I'm a rigger and other techies will understand that reference. Once your dial decal is punched out thus, dip it in my water which is just over my shoulder, pop that there. And it only takes a matter of several seconds for that to loosen up, it's such a tiny piece of paper. So that was the centre one for the blind flying panel. So, 
have here a bit of Mr. Markfit, uh, sorry, Tamiya Markfit Strong. I'll just pop a little bit in to that instrument recess. Again, if you've got any sort of unsureness, just try and take a note of which way up the dial was before you punch it out. Grab it with the tweezers. Pop it into the hole. Just use the tweezers to sort of mangle it into position. And once you're happy with it, where has my cotton bud gone? Here it is. I have here a damp cotton bud. I literally just podge it like that. I'll soak up all the excess fluid, push it down into the hole. And there you have it. This will take a minute, even on such a simple panel as this, it takes a little while to punch them all out separately and, and pop them in. But given how nice the relief is on this panel, I didn't want to kind of potentially ruin it by trying to fit the whole decal because with all the stretching to go over the detail, a lot of the dials will end up not exactly lining up. So I felt this was a safer option. What I'll do once all the dials are in is carefully cut out some of these little placard details and apply those as well. Alright, while the instrument panel is drying, I have added all the decals to it and I've just brushed on a little coat of a gloss clear. Now this is um, Alclad slash MIG Aqua Gloss. It's just, it's doing the job that we all used to use clear for back in the day. I've just brushed that over the whole thing so that as that dries it will just suck all those decals down, help blend them in um, and just take care of any potential silvering. I am yet to do a few things. I need to paint these two white rectangle parts. I need to paint those one red, one yellow. Uh, then when uh, tomorrow, when this is all had plenty of time to dry, I will then flat coat the whole panel uh, and then pick out all these dials again with either gloss varnish or crystal clear. I'm not sure which yet. Uh, and then these three white dots up here, these are actually these spare gun sight bulbs. Uh, they need to be picked out in gloss as well. And that'll be the instrument panel done, which will then be able to be fitted and will allow me to complete the construction of the airframe. So, fuse lodges together. As is my won't, I have used super glue to glue this. If you look on the inside, you can see where I've reinforced the jaw quite substantially from the back. I used black super glue along the nose just to aid in the visibility of the seam or lack thereof and as can be seen there's not much to see. Now the black super glue with talc it tends to leave a stain so this looks like a lot more than it is. I'll move across to the rear part I haven't used black, I've used clear, but as you can see, you can't really see it at all. Uh, this area is much more tricky to sand and blend, obviously, because of the... Come on, camera. Because of the subtle fabric ribbing, so you need to be careful of that. Underneath the nose there, again, I used the black, so you can see that fairly clearly. In other things that we've done, so these vents, the instructions state here to remove the vents for versions 1 and 2. We're doing 1, so I removed it. The instructions are not clear as to whether they just need to be removed on this side or on both. I've removed them on both. Uh, this needed a lot of care because there is rivet detail right next to this. So I used some uh, tape over those details when I sanded it to make sure I didn't Sort of knock any of those details off uh, and obviously I've used come on focus I've used the black super glue again there just to aid the visibility of what I've done both sides they are slightly different each side so that's that this is all sanded and polished and ready to go including the back end here and what you may have noticed is that my my spout's gone on the front. Uh, that's because I wasn't happy with the, f the front area here. The front face of the fuselage, as it 
as molded wasn't anywhere near flat so that when I tried to fit test fit the propeller and spinner it just it was wobbly and had a massive gap there is meant to be a gap here and I will put a shim of super thin plastic card in the front there to act as a spacer when I actually fit when I get a bit closer but now see without the the where's it gone here it is this I took the snap just snapped that off and then used a flat sanding board and just carefully sanded until this was flat and flush all the way across now some of you might be sitting there going but 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 how are you going to glue the propeller and spinner on uh, well without wishing to sound flippant I'm going to use glue I don't, I've never understood this thing where modelers want, want to have to build up an internal engine say to have something to mount the prop on I'm going to glue it just so you don't need to have a, a spike to stick it on you can just glue it and when I was messing about with this um, these lumps here I had this thought somewhere deep in my mind I thought hang on are those not just bulges to, to clear sort of the prop prop reduction gear or something I don't know exactly what uh, and should they in fact be hollow and I looked at a looked up on the Google quick image shows me that yes indeed they are so using oh, my camera really isn't playing today there we go Using uh, my curved scalpel, I very, very carefully, gradually dug out this channel here, all the way across the bottom and around these two bulges, so that now, when the propeller and spinner are fitted, you get that impression of hollowness as the real thing should be, especially when it's held away just ever so slightly for that little gap that we want. So that's that. Staying with the fuselage for the moment, here is our tailpiece. Now this, now that it's cleaned up and clearanced, I've got a nicely fitting elevator assembly with a little bit of clearance both sides. When we fit this to the fuselage, it's quite a nice sturdy type fit into its slot, and you can see that front edge has got a sort of a square that is going to have to be filled and that is going to be awkward rest of it absolutely no issues at all quite happy with that there's a little bit of movement in that as well if you're worried and then when you add the fin this was very tight so I did trim this base a little bit for it to fit on that sits on there like so and you can see there's a bit again of the black super glue in that leading edge where I straightened out that curled up damage it did need a little bit of filler to sort that out now up the back you've got four holes to which the rudder plugs in and when you try to introduce it it's immediately apparent that it doesn't it's it's really tight and if you pushed it hard enough to push these pegs in the likelihood is they would snap when you take it out again so at first I wondered if it was misaligned but I hope you can see that the pegs there do actually line up with the holes it's just that the holes aren't big enough and when you look we'll just use the fin because it'd be easier when you look at this the top hole I've actually already enlarged and you can see the difference and indeed that the bottom hole isn't remotely circular anymore anyway or isn't or wasn't or never was but for your information a 1.1 millimeter drill bit just carefully round that hole back out and there we go slots beautifully and it sits there beautifully what else have we been doing we've been playing with cooling parts so firstly the carburetor intake comes in two halves this has been glued together and it's been sand the joint has been sanded and what I also did is thinned the front edge quite significantly and and whilst doing so used a round file which removed any evidence of the seam line in the corners here 
on the real thing there are mounts I think uh, six mounts for an ice particle guard they're not included on the kit uh, and would be quite tricky to make convincingly in this scale actually uh, that is a reasonable improvement over what's offered for no investment other than a couple of minutes of sanding and filing and the radiator tub as you may or may not recall was in two parts the inside was sprayed earlier these two were simply offered together I did retouch the panel line here because as moulded because of the mould being vertical it was a little indistinct so I just brought that out and I've just smoothed any mould seams off the front there and the way this fits together the, t the radiator parts have been joined note the uh, brass for the pipe work has been added to that uh, and I simply used some of that wash whilst I was doing everything else this pops into position here like so so this area here is going to want to be pre-painted and you're going to want to where's my tweezers here they are colour these pipes brass as well that link up once that's in position the radiator but the scoop sits over the top and down into position just like that absolutely beautiful and the fit of that is plenty good enough that you can leave that off until after painting if you wish which will make it a bit easier just around here what I did find in doing so though you see how the radiator just it's come out with the wing it's quite snug there was a large ejector pin lump in the bottom there you can see the big patch with no paint which I carved and scraped off because when it was still there the housing it had quite a lot of rock on it basically it was making the radiator core too tall so the housing was sort of tipping over it so getting rid of that allowed the housing just to slot down beautifully without any fuss at all So quite a few little improvements just to, to improve the fit and improve the finish of a couple of these parts. Uh, one last thing with the wing, through looking at all the photographs I've discovered that this join here, what is a joint on the kit between the upper and, come on please focus camera. The joint on the kit between the upper and lower wing halves here is a seam on the real thing. So I will be scribing that back in and in fact adding some kind of fasten the detail along it as well. So I'm pretty much getting to the end of construction here although it doesn't look like I've done a thing. I've been around and prepped all the other parts so here is the control panel, instrument panel sorry, now that it's been flat coated and then the dials gloss back up. The bigger deeper dials I used crystal clear, the others I just used some um, gloss varnish and I've done the same thing so then we're going to show up done the same thing to the compass so that's ready for fitting to the instrument panel and once that's on the instrument panel it can go into the fuselage and then the two can come together but I reasoned that while the wing is separate I might as well do everything possible because it's easy to get at everything while it's in two parts so I clipped off all of the remaining parts which is not that many and I've been around and prepped them all and test fitted them all and made sure everything slots in and fits as it should with the following little modifications so this piece here is I believe a gun camera there are a couple of different options I clipped off the appropriate one for this option and it fits into the leading edge thus and I have managed to achieve an almost flawless fit with that but I did have to fettle it a little bit so don't want to lose it in there inside the leading edge there's a little peg I'm going to have the traditional multiple second wait for the camera to focus so you see the little peg and then this piece has a slot in the bottom of it which slips over said peg and sets the depth so I've had to deepen this slot by a lot to get that to fit flush because initially it sat quite proud and it shouldn't okay it's meant to be a flush fit uh, elsewhere then here is the 
So that's it for the wing actually. Um, I've added the extra struts into the landing gear bay there. Uh, and that's essentially ready to go. I don't know also if you noticed when I showed you there how the, the little areas that I filled previously would have been gaps had I not filled them, obviously. So this is the step, the boarding step, which fits here in the bottom of the wing. I did have to drill out the mounting hole for that for it to fit nicely. However, I thought I'd point out, because it isn't mentioned in the instructions, that if you wish to depict the step as stowed rather than extended, what you're going to have to do is cut to put it on there. Right, cut the rounded part and the stick off so you've just got these two flat pieces and then glue that into the bottom of the housing here and I believe that actually that's probably what I will do with this model and that just didn't focus at all did it so there's the little housing the little slot with the hole what you're gonna have to do if you want this retracted is to cut it down so you've only got the two bottom pieces this smaller piece and this bigger piece and just glue them into that slot and if you want it extended as depicted I did have to clear that hole out a little bit so that's that and then moving on to the fuselage there are separate moulded parts for these lumps in the forward part of the cowling this one is fitted and I've got a very nice fit there it's very slightly proud but only very slightly I did hunt out some images because when I initially tried to fit the part, just show you with this other one. It fits perfectly fine, but it is quite proud, pronounced even. And I wasn't sure that that was perfectly the way it ought to be, actually. So I did a little bit of searching around and I found this really rather lovely image. Obviously it's a restored aircraft, but if you look at that, in fact, I'll just zoom in quite a lot, you can see that in fact that bulge, it, you know, it's got a, a mounting plate and that's all that, all the proudness is the thickness of the metal that bulge is made from. So for it to stick up a lot is, it's really not prototypical. So to remedy that, it's not a big deal by any means. But to remedy that, I simply just trimmed a little bit of the thickness out of the underneath of this. And in fact, where's my curved scalpel? It's gone missing. Also, just went around the inside, just using the tip of the scalpel, you can scrape to add a little bit more depth. And I should point out actually that this one doesn't sit as proud as the other one did actually it's a little bit better but just to completely get that flush that's how I did that I also very carefully scraped and sanded where these lumps are these bumps in the side of the cowling here it was a sort of a circular mold seam kind of protrusion around those um, so I got rid of that as well And now, the whole thing's pretty much as good as I'm going to get it. But I am going to, as I say, fit the, the parts to the wing before I fit the wing to the fuselage anyway. So the last thing I wanted to test fit before I really went any further and, and finally uh, glued the wing to the fuselage was the landing lamp covers and the ident lamp covers for the wings. And I really hate it when these parts look like they've been added on at the end of the build which is generally because they have been um, I find they detract horribly a lot of the time uh, so imagine my joy to discover the fit of these I mean it is in there, that landing lamp cover is fitted, there's no glue it's it's immaculate, it's, it's one of the best fitting transparencies I've ever seen um, and the navigation lamp on the wingtip which the camera is not going to focus on, it is equally good. So 
The beauty of that is that I do not need to fit them before painting, which means that I don't have to mask them because masking these things can be extremely fiddly and just quite a pain in the bottom, honestly. Although that said, we do have a masks on the sheet for the landing lamps at least on, on here they included kabuki style masks um, however as I say they fit so well I'm actually happy to leave them off until afterwards which just saves the bother so I pop that out and see there you go and I pop that off and another thing to note about these landing lamps I'll show you the one that's still on the sprue it's a bit easier to manipulate no, it's got a hole in the back of it, so Alma have moulded it in such a way that you can drop a little bit of transparent colour into this hole and it makes it look like the coloured bulb is fitted once you fit the whole lamp to the aircraft. And what I also did was I have sprayed the inside areas of the aforementioned lamps with my interior aluminium lacquer colour. So yeah, I'm going to fit the wing um, and obviously then the under fuselage part. So I thought I'd probably do that with the camera running. Um, one point to note when adding the wing. So I've got the uh, instrument panel in there now. Uh, and all that wonderful work is now very, very hard to see, of course. The whole interior, in fact, is absolutely glorious. It really is. A couple of more points I suppose I could point out now. The footboards here. I have not chosen to paint them anything other than aluminium. Um, I wasn't sure should they be black, should they have grip grip on, grip on them or something. I, I wasn't sure and I looked around and I found a few options. Uh, mostly the restored aircraft seem not to have any covering on them. Uh, the pictures in my AP seem to have wooden boards on them, uh, on top. Uh, and I have other pictures actually also in the AP it's got some proper photos further back if I just see if I can't quickly find them for you here we go some nicely reproduced black and white photos uh, extremely relevant obviously to the build we're doing here it's quite well known photos but then here we have some cockpit pictures and here you can see that the footboards are painted in a dark colour which is dirty and cheap. And this uh, aircraft, I think it was a better one, is uh, it's a museum aircraft. These aren't original sort of period photos as such but it appears to be unrestored and this last one here um, I wanted to point out the instrument sort of combing area, the little bit of instrument combing that fits under the front windscreen, which does appear to be interior green rather than black. It's certainly, or maybe even aluminium actually. It's certainly not the same colour as the actually black instrument panel or spade grip handle anyway, and indeed the reflector. So I have painted mine interior green based on that. Anyway, that was a digression. I'm good at those, aren't I? Um, yeah, when fitting the wing, obviously this seat back bulkhead area leans back, so just do be aware of that when putting the two together. If you just offer it straight up, it doesn't really work. You have to kind of angle it in. And obviously being careful of that instrument panel as well. There we go. No big deal. I probably did that off, off camera, didn't I? Um, there it is, popped in. bits like a glove uh, and yeah all that beautiful interior detail is now all but impossible to see but you know how it goes we know it's in there don't we and there is your wing to fuselage fit where rules the crowd it's it's literally invisible even without any glue because the joint is along this panel line here and the surfaces are beveled such that when they're put together the joint becomes the panel line and thus is completely invisible and needs no further work. Likewise, the joint under the nose 
falls on a natural cowling brake again will not need any further work the only area of this joint that's going to need a dressing at all is right back here next to the step just push that into place and the, the tiny bit of joint that will result there will want just just tickling in but that is it you can see this does need to be pushed up a touch at the back to go into position I suspect that's partly because of the rectification that we had to do with those bent down trailing edges but you know it's sat there absolutely stonking I will apply glue momentarily so let's get some glue on it then with anything like this when the join is as good as this you do you do need to be a little bit careful with the glue because I'm sure I'm in picture if you put too much in there it it's going to squeeze out when you just hold the parts together and, and that will ruin completely the illusion of no joint so just take it steady a little bit at a time just to just to touch this liquid cement I'm not putting too much pressure you can see I've got a bit of pressure on there but not that much and I'm letting the glue evaporate just a little bit before I really apply any more pressure to really seat the two parts together just to try and avoid having any glue squeeze out of this joint because it is just a pain to clean it off nicely and then you you're getting into rescribing and everything else so just be patient with it the result should be a joint that literally requires no further work whatsoever So not a first, I have built other kits before with wing joints that are, you know, no further work required, but it's not common. It's not common at all. Alright then, so the wing is on, it's glued, it's dry, uh, and as promised, no filler. Well, not completely, then there's the tiniest, tiniest little speck right here. There's a very slight gap, and again, I've used the black super glue literally so that you can even see it. I glued in the belly plate, I use liquid cement to do this. Um, now, the main reason that I don't use liquid cement a lot in the build of these things is ghost seams. Uh, it matters not who you are or how good of a model you are, if you use plastic cement to glue things like this, the kind of seams eventually the seams will shift around a little bit you have to use such minimal amounts of the glue to try and avoid that that you know you run the risk of things not really being glued properly and that's because liquid cement melts the plastic uh, in order to make the joint it welds it together uh, by melting it very slightly whereas super glue is a mechanical bond it doesn't melt the plastic or in any way change its properties so super glue joints will never produce a ghost seam it's not possible for them to do that so that's why i use it uh, and it's also very very quick obviously you don't have to wait for anything to set up so yeah belly plate was glued in with liquid cement though because it features that mitre to seam it's right on a corner and as well you do need to put a scribe in all the way down because the belly of the hurricane was actually made out of removable panels so you can see the panel line that the panel lines that armor have provided i have simply added one now all the way down each side to show those removable panels i then fitted the tower plane as you can see the elevator is just sat in place it's not glued anywhere i will i'll probably put a touch of glue on it at some point just to hold it level actually but it doesn't really matter it doesn't sit very far off level um, it sits down onto that seat, no issues with that. And again, I've used the black super glue so that what joint there is is visible to you. It's very, very minimal, thankfully, because the combination of fabric detail plus the raised um, fastener detail for the fillets means there's not a lot of space to address the joint and address the joint you must because of where it is. 
And really the final sort of even slightly major part of construction that's left at this point is, is the fin itself. And it sits on top of this plinth that's moulded into the top of the tail plane. I did find that the fit was very tight onto that plinth so I have with the good old curved blade just if you set it into that angle you can use the very tip of the blade just to gently thin out that fit, that plinth and that's what I've done until, until I've got to a point where the fin will sit on there nicely there's no resistance to pushing it down and I've done that to minimise any chance of a gap at the bottom of that joint. Now when fitting this seam you may note, fin sorry, you may note that it is not straight. Please don't worry about that, it's deliberate, it's not meant to be straight. Um, it's very common on older propeller driven aircraft, in fact on all propeller driven aircraft, that the fin is either offset or it has a um, an unequal aerofoil section so that it effectively produces lift in one direction and it's done it's done like that to counteract the effect of the prop wash on the aircraft it saves um, the pilot having to use so much trim to keep the aircraft straight so yeah the offset fin is entirely deliberate so don't try and straighten it there we go that's that fitted and then finally the rudder obviously just plugs into the back and now that we have those slightly enlarged holes it does so very easily and that is pretty much it I am going to permanently fit the windscreen before I, before I get to painting so I'll show you that once I've got it on but for the main airframe construction that's your lot and the total amount of actual filler required is so incredibly minuscule. I don't think I've ever built a kit with as little filler in it as this. It's it's truly beautiful the way it goes together. And it doesn't need a lot of help from the modeler either. It, it's, it's, I won't, I'm not going to say it's idiot proof because idiots are very inventive in their use of idiocy. And will find ways around almost any built in safeguards. But Really, there's, there's not much you can get wrong on this thing if you can clean off a sprue stub properly. It's very, very impressive. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and a real, real pleasure to work on and to build. Well, here it is. Complete airframe all together. Filled, sanded, ready for paint. Just, yeah, such a beautiful, easy build. Um, the last thing I did was fit the gun sight in there uh, and fit the windscreen. These are the kit supplied Kabuki style tape masks. Apart from you can see there's a bare metal foil one on the top there, which is there because for whatever reason the, the pre cut masks didn't quite seem like it wanted to fit. I don't, I don't know, it might have been me. Um, so the last little bit really is the canopy, and you get two with the kit one open, one closed. The reason for that, if you look at the cockpit aperture there you can see it's tapered the rear end is wider than the front uh, thus one of these canopies is meant to be fitted in the closed position and the other one is wider but fitting in the open position now I want to do an open one I think on the hurricane it doesn't really ruin the lines like it does on some aircraft when the canopies are open plus there's all that beautiful internal detail and I didn't really want to hide it so this is how mine's going to be uh, I've removed the aerial posts from the rudder as directed here and I've also removed the little mounting tab on the main aerial as well as directed there. I'm not fitting the glare shields, I really wanted to because I think they look cool but this aircraft didn't have them by all accounts so I'm not fitting those and that basically is that. We've got the drop tanks, we have the radiator housing and the undercarriage doors propeller and spinner already that's it we can get painting it's important to remember so I've masked up this canopy it needs to be painted in conjunction with the model I prefer to do them fitted and together but that just isn't possible in the case of the hurricane the way it fits 
I mean, obviously this one doesn't fit anyway in the closed position because it's too wide at the front. The real thing flexes as it goes up backwards and forwards down the tracks. Um, so it'll have to be done separately. I will mount it to a spatula with some tape and it will get painted alongside the model but it is important they get painted together so that it looks the same when you do fit it. So I know a longer video doesn't really matter in terms of the viewing. You guys would probably prefer to have it all in one go. I get that but it matters on the basis for me that editing and then producing a longer video just takes an incredibly long time uh, the amount of time it takes to render an edited video seems to seems to increase exponentially as the video gets longer and the um, Tellery bare naked build f35 it literally took all day for that video to produce and then it took all evening for it to upload to YouTube so for my sanity and my computer's longevity, um, I'll stick to the slightly shorter format and you'll get a part two which will cover the painting and finishing of this in due course. So I hope you found this useful so far. This is a stunning, stunning, absolutely beautiful new kit from Armour. Uh, so if you've bought one and you're starting to build it, hopefully you can follow this along and, and it will be of use to you. So thanks for watching part one. I'll look forward to seeing you in part two. And with all of that said, it only remains for me to say, look after yourselves. Look after each other. Genesis out.